the Maybach music. Now, it's 2022. I haven't been friends with this guy since at least 2014, late 2013. And the fact that I have to sit up here because we have irresponsible people who call themselves EVPs and couldn't fucking manage a target, and they spread lies and bullshit and, and put into a media that I got somebody fired when I have fuck all to do with him, want nothing to do with him, do not care where he works, where he doesn't work, where he eats, where he sleeps. And the fact that I have to get up here and do this in 2022 is fucking embarrassing. And if y'all are at fault, fuck you. If you're not, I apologize. But what did I ever do in this world to, go, to deserve an empty-headed fucking dumb fuck like Hangman Adam Page to go out on national television and fucking go into business for himself? For what? What did I do? Dave, what did I ever do? Didn't do a goddamn thing. What's your name, sir? Is this thing on? Are we live? Charlemagne, are we live? Man, listen, listen, listen. <laughs> no, we're not going to do it yet. We're not going to do it yet. Not yet? No, not yet. Not yet. Okay. You're listening, you're listening to the A Show. The Kings Pro Wrestling Podcast. I'm J5. Here with Meals. Drop another one just for that. <laughs> We're here. It's, it's a day that... Last year... <laughs> no, you know what? Man, fuck that. This is... This How is How was you... No, no, no. How was your weekend? How was your weekend? I'm going to make them wait for it. I'm going to make them wait for it. My weekend was great. My weekend, great Labor Day weekend. A lot of rest. A lot of uh, great stuff happening outside. West Indian Day Parade is back in New York City. Very happy for that. Lots of good vibes around. I'm feeling good. You know what also helped me feel good? That everyone got their t-shirts before Labor Day. I was super excited about that. I was happy to see them all on the timeline and everyone enjoying themselves. And guess what? I wore one this weekend for the first time. That that shirt has not touched my body until I made sure that all of them, who everyone who bought it, was sent out because I would have felt bad otherwise. Yeah, I'm, I, I need I need everyone who got a shirt to wear it right now when you listen to this episode. Mm, put it on. Right now. <laughs> I moved. I moved all weekend. Get down. Turn my sound up. <laughs> I moved. I moved all weekend, and you know, LA is going through one of the biggest heat waves, literally, <laughs> in all of, of all time. You were sweating, <laughs> bro. It was crazy. 113 degrees. Uh, where where we're at right now? Uh, I'm actually not even there right now because it's so hot. We're we're still literally just at our um. And my in-laws because it's it's too hot. And y'all ain't got no central. They ain't turn on. The- it doesn't matter. We have central. It doesn't matter because this it's like this is like unprecedented heat. Like it, there's no way, especially with just how. All right, let me just go ahead preemptively do this. With how big the place that we moved in is now, <laughs> drop a bomb for that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and listen, it's not like huge, but like you know. It, it, there's just no, um, there's no way that it circulates well. We have two dogs that have, you know, that that are have really small snouts. We have two Frenchies, so like they can't really be in the heat. And also, our bed's not there. So like, if, if the bed was there, we we definitely be there right now. But we just figured, you know, let's just let's just just hold out until about Wednesday when this, all this whole thing blows over. <sighs> It's too hot. Let me get a cigarette right now. Hold on. <laughs> imagine, imagine if I let a cigarette on this show. Um, <laughs> that would be insane. <laughs> uh, I'm going to name this episode um, "Pipe Bomb" mm. because there's a 
there's a lot of things that we're going to talk about on, on this episode. I don't want to mince any words because there's a lot of stuff that happened last weekend. Labor Day weekend is becoming like a weekend for wrestling. Um, in a way. And this was quite a weekend, weekend before everything else happened. <laughs> yeah, it was quite a weekend. So, Mills, do you want to pop on over to, because we got a lot to talk about on um, No Hose Bar today. Uh, you want to pop over to uh, Patreon so we can talk about um, NXT? Let's do it. Big right. weekend in wrestling. Let's All get right. it. We'll be, right. we'll be right back. All right, Patreon. Actually, we're we're like battling with with a moral conundrum right now because I feel like we have the the ability to say something like early before it gets out, literally in hours from now. Let me text my guy. So let's talk about NXT real quick. Let's talk about NXT. That's for sure. Um, NXT. Uh, gosh, what was it this time? <laughs> I forget. Uh, oh my god! Wait. This was NXT. I mean, whatever. It was NXT. No, it was Worlds Collide. I'm bugging. It's OD Worlds Collide. It's Worlds Collide. Uh, Worlds Collide happened this weekend. Probably, I would say, if there the was... World, the world was so normal <laughs> when Worlds Collide came out, <laughs> when, when it aired on Sunday afternoon. Everything was just nice. <laughs> everything was so normal. <laughs> Here's what I'll say about Worlds Collide. In terms of a pay-per-view that kind of like, I'm not saying NXT 2.0 isn't restoring the feeling, but anything that was like, okay, these guys have been elevated to having like matches, maybe even in the same stratosphere as the black and gold era, this was it. It felt like a true return to form. All these wrestlers that they've been essentially building for the last year, because we're approaching, we're, we're probably like one week away, um, maybe two weeks away from the one year anniversary of NXT 2.0. But all of these wrestlers that have been part of it, worlds collide, they really got to like show up and show out. And then you also have the NXT UK, who people, quite honestly, I'm going to keep it a book with you, people probably have not seen in years. I'm just going to yeah. say <laughs> Blair Davenport, rarely see her wrestle. Tyler Bate, I love him. Haven't really seen him. Unless there's a UK takeover, we really don't get to see it. Um, they got to show out as well. And a couple main roster cats who, you know, I guess, like, they didn't have to travel overseas, but they might have still got their time and a half. Also featured on this card. Yeah, really, really good stuff. I thought the build to this was really great. I think 2.0 is starting to really kind of come into its own um but i think the the real issue is that like at the top i think there needs to be some shakeups. they did it with the tag division i felt as though people thought i thought gallus was going to win but it made sense they're pretty deadly won because to me they're far and away the best heels you could have in the division like that mm-hmm. um they're the most talented to me team just out of the I, and i know you know people love diamond mind i know they're talented i'm not saying they suck but, I mean, they're talented in terms of getting a reaction. You know what I mean? And speaking of reaction. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. Listen. What, 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 reaction. Uh, you let him go. Oh, okay. All right. So we we can talk about it. So, what do you want to preface this as? Because people will be hearing this, and we might have to essentially splice this into the main show, to be honest with you. Um, I but- think that we... I, I mean... Hey, look, calls happening, calls going down. <laughs> I'm, I'm hearing... And mind you, this is someone who told me about the MJF stuff. We announced it on here. Told me about the backstage stuff with Punk and Paige that we talked about in the Discord. You know, a lot of the people from our Discord community can corroborate with this. We've got really great guys in our Discord. Shout out to, I won't name you guys, but shout out to everybody that, again, provides a lot of information for us. Um, and this makes it worth the 20. Let's just say that. 
Absolutely. Uh, uh, listen, man, I'm hearing that CM Punk and A Steel got let go from AEW. Listen, early thoughts on this before we head into the main section and kind of like talk about the entire situation. We may have to splice us in, so it, it just is what it is. But I mean, I don't want to talk about this too preemptively, but there's no way you could act the way you act and not be let go. And it's a recurring thing with punk, which is going to be a prelude into everything that we talk about. It's a recurring thing with punk about how his own attitude has maybe cost him multiple bags, has cost him multiple opportunities, has cost him, um, I don't know, just friends and stuff like, damn, like. (sighs) <sighs> what do you think? What's your first thoughts? These are legitimately raw thoughts. We just got this news. Um, I'm speechless. I went on, and, and it, you know, we've been joking, but I said it on Twitter yesterday. I said, how, how could you realistically do what he did I'm sorry, NXT. Do what he did. <laughs> do we just want to put this on? Just, just fuck it. Just, let's, just do all. all let's, keep it, let's keep it. You know what? The entire thing. Let's talk about it because we're going to talk about it in full later on. I don't want there to be context missing. I don't want us to have to cut out, splice too many different things. We're going to do this. Patreon. We got y'all. I guarantee you. Yeah, we got y'all with with, with some special stuff. Don't worry. We got it. We, we but this is like. This is breaking, and we got to get y'all the news first. And you guys are already talking about it in the Discord, but there's some people that aren't in our Discord. So, All Out happened on Sunday. Um, we all saw CM Punk regain the world title. Um, we we saw that happen. The, we, we talked about the Hangman stuff that happened a couple of weeks ago. Um, I had remember he- hearing that they had they had issues. So wait, let me that. look. Let me preface this. We're going to talk about the entire thing right now. We'll talk about NXT later is what you're saying. We're going to talk about the whole thing. All right, cool. Let let me get in my mode. (laughs) If at all, if at all. And, and honk did a, what, what what could, what could nearly just be called a rant, a literal rant there that was to me completely unprofessional completely out of out of whack completely ridiculous not a fucking not a work i mean at all in any sense of the word to to be clear in my 25 30 years of watching wrestling i've never seen nothing like this before ever i've never seen it i watched the finger poke <laughs> you know what i'm saying I, i've seen some crazy shit you we've all seen some crazy stuff nothing compares to cm punk going on going in and to, and what could only be described as a reaction to the rumors that came out after that uh that's that that promo that he cut where he called Adam Page a bitch and he he basically shot on the whole roster he did it all over again well all right so here's how I'm feeling about this entire thing and I've had a chance to kind of like sit with my feelings um first of all I think both sides are completely in the wrong I think in terms of like as an EVP, how they're handling business, but also CM Punk as the who at this point should be the wild, wise industry sage who are handling this thing. But to me, none of this is also surprising, considering the history of all parties involved. And I say I really want to st- to be to be completely real with you. I really do want to start from the beginning, but I'm not going to take it back there to 2019 because I do feel like the current, even at the beginning, the foundation to me wasn't completely sturdy as it is with new things, and I think with the Bucks and Kenny as EVPs and while they're at this point trying to do what's best for the company, they are still kind of running it the way they kind of run it. Um, And Cody Rhodes in itself, to me, the the red flag is the Cody thing and how they handle the Cody thing. If I can just skip three years and say, all right, let's bring this back to a modern thing. The red flag for me is the Cody thing. Mm -hmm. And And I say that because 
the way his exit occurred to me, especially how it was handled from Kenny and the Bucks themselves and then Tony Khan not paying Cody, even though, you know, he was someone who brought in, who did things outside of the wrestling to try to make it feel bigger, right? And this is Punk's argument as well. He's trying to handle business itself and he's trying to expand AEW and these guys are still trying to work in Reseda. Like, you know what I'm saying? Still trying to small minded in the way they approach things for this company. So it was Cody Rhodes kind of doing the same thing and trying to elevate it as well. And they offered not to renew him or resign him or anything of the rather. And it was, and we talked about this literally the episode of, because we thought it was so weird. And I'm bringing up this Kenny Omega wrestling observer newsletter interview, because it's very, it's not covered enough but I think both you and I know that was completely out of left field, considering yeah. the circumstances of one, Kenny's injured, not on TV, not appearing, not doing any public appearances, but he decides to come out to do this He's injured. <laughs> yeah. To what was he was, he was make maybe three weeks removed from, from being off TV. No, nah, he was not. Nah, it was like a couple months, but it was two months, but still it's like, he, we ain't seen him. He didn't make any really public appearances or any talks since then, to be honest with you. And that was in February. You know what I'm saying? So he got injured in November, was staying off TV for a long time, literally just returned like three weeks ago. But in February, he had the time to talk to the Wrestling Observer newsletter to paint this narrative of what Cody's contribution or lasting contribution to AEW was, even after post, you know, the thank yous, the Tony Khans, everyone getting out, they're doing their handwritten note, I'm leaving at the time to design. He went out of there to say, like, this is how it was perceived. And you got to think, I'm Brian, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm Brian Windhorse in this situation. Why would Kenny Omega do that? Why would he go out and try to portray and do these things? And, 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 and to be honest, I still really don't know, but I would have to say that it's to shit on someone that he didn't like. So I fast forward to the past two weeks of AEW and all the reports, all the Fightful Selects, all the stuff that's come out in the media about Punk. And, and don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm going to get to Punk. Because Punk is already, we got to drag his name through the mud. and I, Not his we name through the go mud. We got to go to 2021. The bombs come out for him. So go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we got to, yeah, we got to, we got to talk about Punk. But in this situation, it's the same thing, right? Like they're, he's champion of this organization and they're going out their way to, to sprinkle in these news reports, talk to the media, try to slander his name and stuff like that. As he's, you know, he's speculating, I'm trying to build this company. And it's something that they have a tr proven history for. They are connected to the wrestling media. They absolutely are. And you guys can't tell me they're not. I don't care which you, uh, Dave Meltzer driver, uh, everyone, at, you know, who got it, whoever got their cousins at work there, everyone who's on the inside talking about it, you know, AEW and bringing up exclusive reports and all the other stuff like that. You can't tell me they don't have that. Like they've got their they've got their ties to the media to kind of change the narrative. And we've seen this me and you just kind of like who look at the world beyond wrestling media, because I think everyone who thinks this is a work to me doesn't look at this beyond the wide spectrum of, of the scope, because this has happened in various forms of entertainment. It's mm -hmm. happened a lot all the time. Mm -hmm. um, and we I think we kind of have the perspective to be able to look at this as a bigger picture, as opposed to like this wrestling thing that people are looking at. And is this a work? If it's a work, blah, blah, blah. To me, if you believe it's a work, you are delusional and you're part of the problem that it currently exists with AEW. <laughs> like you're literally part of the problem because you refuse to acknowledge the red flags. You refuse to acknowledge the problems that these things have. And you refuse to essentially voice your opinion about it. If I get back to this thing, you knew it was coming when you knew it was coming. But like, yeah. listen, man, they ignored whether it was coming or not. They didn't find that we, you know, me and you, and pretty much everyone thing. We take the bullets, and this is why I know this. Epi this episode is for the people who, well, they're gonna listen anyway. Even if you blocked us, you're gonna listen anyway. I'm almost sure. 
because we have been talking about this for years. We've been reading between the lines. We've read who who's a journalist who's been covering this in the in the most um Sean Ross that. Yeah, no, 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 no. Covering it <laughs> damn. Now what I'm about to say is gonna sound wild shady. Cover this in the most <laughs> Meltzer? No, no, no. Was it um Keller? What you Keller? Yeah, Keller. No, I love Keller. No, he's good. Yeah. He's been covering this in kind of the way where he's also taking a look at AEW and like, okay, that doesn't seem right. And we've been following these reports because even back in 2019, we, we, we would hear the reports of, you know, the Bucks and Cody. There's some, you know, there's some tension at the EVP level because this side wants to do this side thing and this side wants to do this thing. And then Cody eventually. You could see it. it. Like, you could see it. Well, listen to the war report with Cyrus and Quan, like the difference in between when they were really enjoying the show and when they, it just became like, what the fuck is going on? And that's been for a whole year at this point. And. I, you you got to give a lot of you got to give a lot of a lot of air to to Cyrus for really kind of like really noticing this and this is for someone who wasn't really a huge you know a wrestling fan four or five years ago seven years ago whatever you know what I mean like I I, I gotta you gotta kind of look at it like yo this is someone that wasn't really in he he was noticing something was wrong you know what I'm saying people who listen to the War Report with Cyrus and Quan every week noticing they noticing he's like no this isn't this isn't how shit's supposed to go. And not that because he's like a huge fan of WWE either way, just just common sense. These shows stop making sense a year into their run. But we take all the bullets for this anyway, because people call us haters and people call you the worst account on earth. And people say, oh, you're such a thing. And we're doing all this because we're openly criticizing the things that we see. These are things that we've seen, that we're looking at, that we're observing. When we talk about Adam Cole, we don't talk about Adam Cole just to talk shit. We talk about how we looked at his career in NXT and we look at his career now. We look at what Daniel Bryan was in WWE and we look at how one year after Bryan Danielson debuts, now he's taking all types of losses. You know what I'm saying? To to Chris Jericho, nonetheless. And not to say that Chris Jericho isn't a strong guy, but for what? And why was that match even made? You know, like we look at these things. And we give our critiques on it. And people who don't like it feel a type of way about it. I'm going to block us, I'm going to call us all types of names. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter because guess what? We're right. We're right at the end of the day. Fuck all that. Fuck all that. Fuck all that. Forget about it. One year ago, we had a show. A year ago, yesterday, or a year ago, literally a year ago, period, when we recorded the show, right? All out 2021. CM Punk returns, Adam Cole goes to AEW, Brian Danielson goes to AEW. It's over. New number one is crowned. We said, not so fast. Not so fast. How is this going to work? It's on our YouTube. Go check it out. It's a good page. We digital. We digital. We everywhere. (laughs) We said, not so fast. We said, wait a minute. How is this going to work? You just debuted Adam Cole right next to Brian Danielson. He looks like just a guy. 365 days later, one of them is injured. One of them is just a guy. You were there, Mills. You was there, right? Listen, not only was I there, everybody else was there. So I don't have to. <laughs> Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Let's go. Let's go. Week one, week one two, and three, CM Punk is going to talk. He got something to say. He got something to say. He's always talking. I said, damn, when's he going to do something? Does he starting to feel like a guy to you right now, Mills? He had his match against Darby Allen. That was his big return match. Well, hold on, hold on, Mills. Hold on, Mills. Where's Darby Allen now? He said he's appearing at 11.33 on a stacked. <laughs> a super yeah, keep on. Keep on. Card. On a stack bloated all-out card. He's appearing at 11.33 with Miro and uh, I forgot who he faced. Oh, the House of Black. P- bless their soul. <laughs> bless Malachi Black soul. Before we go, before we go any further, because I don't know if we're going to have time to get to him today. 
Free Malachi Black, free Alistair Black, free Tommy Ann. We're going to get to him next week, though. Go ahead. So the everything's lining up to me with the Bucks and kind of how they handle things in the media and how they stay. And this is kind of why there's a part of me that sees the frustration with CM Punk that understands the frustration with CM Punk because he feels like his name as despite what he's trying to do, he feels like his name is being run through dirt and it's being run through by children who have never drawn a fucking dime compared to him. We're not there yet. We're not there yet. Mills. Where are we at? There's more. There's more. How many people did he beat on that roster before he took a loss? Who? CM Punk? Mm-hmm. Everybody. Nah. They give him everything. Nah, nah. I'll, I'll I'll give you this. CM Punk beat. He spent pretty much his run doing his best to like. Oh, okay. I'm gonna fight these guys that I really think are like cool. Like I'm a I'm a I'm a face um, Lee Moriarty because I think he's cool and he's a young guy you know who deserves the time and I I want to face Dante Martin because I think he's a young cool guy who deserves the time and stuff like that. I'm hearing that nobody that was involved on Wednesday or who was involved on Sunday is going to be on the show on Wednesday. Let me open up my Discord. <laughs> well, listen, man, he beat everybody. The thing, the thing, you got to, you got to go back even further than that. You got to go to the podcast that he did with Colt Cabana, Scott Colton, who was the 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 who he took aim at during that scrum. We haven't even got to the scrum yet. He said that he wanted to be in the same light as a Brock Lesnar. He wanted to be in the same light as a Miz. He wanted to be in the same light as a John Cena. He wanted to be in the same light as a, hey, let's let's get, just get to it, as a Roman Reigns. Over 700 days as a champ, right? Meals, how in the world can you get everything that you want, every position that you wanted, the push that you wanted, the position that you wanted, the company that you wanted, the opponents that you wanted, the complete situation that you wanted, you do whatever the fuck you want to do. You drop the title to an interim level and you got it back and you're still not happy. You're still not happy. You're still doing the same fuck shit you did in ROH. There's videos of niggas in ROH talking about you, man. What are you doing? You got everything. Let me be clear, man. I was one of the biggest CM Punk fans on, on, on the planet Earth. And then I realized in 2018, he's still mad about this shit, man. Still. What the fuck is going on, man? Let me talk about how initially he wanted nothing to do with wrestling anymore. Went to UFC, did his thing, didn't work out. I think he just started like working on comic books or something of the rather. Um, then he appears as a thing for WWE backstage. This is why all the slander is null and void to me of his WWE thing. Because he said he quit sports entertainment a long while ago, but it was being the voice and commentary for it. You could say that he was hired for Fox, but you're talking about WWE, involved with WWE wrestlers, and talking to WWE wrestlers. To me, that just doesn't make any sense. He's a grifter. He's a grifter. <laughs> CM Grift is his name. <laughs> CM Panhandler. So then he says the shit he says, no longer appearing on the show anymore. Literally similar reasons to what how he's going through. I dropped my mic. Literally similar reasons to where he's going through now is the same reasons why, you know, he wasn't appearing. He's hurt. Appearing on backstage before backstage eventually just got cut entirely. Um, Miz rattled him. Shout out to Miz. Shout out to me. Get that money. Man. Good main event. Good main event. We're going to talk about that a little bit later. You ain't got to tell me twice. Um, so he ends up at a star cave. And he's telling everyone, you guys don't have to deal with star, 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 um, star, cast. star cast. Yeah, there you go. 
he ends up he says you don't got to live through tribalism da, 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 da. i have no interest in appearing for aew i have no appearing interest in appearing for wwe blah 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 whatever <laughs> Less than, I think it might be two years later, maybe a year later, something along those lines, he signs with AEW. Because like you said, Justin, they gave him everything he wanted. And to be honest with you, that's the signing that AEW needs to make. That's the signing that they should have. Because CM Punk is one of the most notable names in professional wrestling, no matter how much of a prick and a dickhead he is. He's one of the most notable names in professional wrestling. Literally, this media scrum broke the internet because of CM Punk. And at, at this point, I don't know why they're fighting with him about anything. Well, now nah, I know, because he's a prick. But, <laughs> but also, how do we get here? How do you get here? here? You get here by what you said. There was already mounting issues with the EVPs in Tony Khan that broke down this January with Cody deciding to leave and with the Bucks and the elite not really trusting Tony Khan's leadership with being a booker. Look at how the Bucks have been booked. Look at where they are. They had to get trios tournaments. They had to make a trios tournament so they could have a belt because at this point they were hogging the tag team titles because, you know, they wanted to hire Jeff Hardy. Again, who, who's, whoever's idea was that, I'm sure we'll find out in the, in the next couple months, if not the next year, when all this shit breaks down. There was already distrust there. When there's distrust there, just like any startup, like any startup where you have a bunch of freaking uh, cooks in the kitchen and no real leader, they start doing weird and random shit. And they looked at Tony as the person doing the weird and random shit. But CM Punk was always there. As the one guy in a startup that's from a Google, from an Apple. Have you ever seen um, the dropout with uh, the, the Elizabeth Holmes character where she she had hired somebody from Apple? She poached them from Apple. And this was the, the chick who had the uh, Theranos machine with the blood and stuff like that. Right. So she would hire all of these actually well-known people and pay them large amounts of money just to say that they had someone on the marquee that was a big name. So she, she poached somebody that was a huge, huge factor from from Apple. And that person saw how shady and how fucked up things were behind the scenes at Theranos. And they said, oh, no, if y'all not going to do it my way or the way that we used to do it, I'm getting the fuck out of here. I'm exposing this shit. CM Punk is that person. Because in the end of the day, you wooed him there with that shiny, happy locker room. But what he really got was, and I'm not, and I'm on no one's side here, but this is the truth. What he got was a company full of amateurs who have never had a real actual United States run who've only been in Japan for most of their careers and don't really know how this shit works. You can look at the show and see that shit. I watch all out like everybody else. The show, you can look at the show and see it. That's the best way to describe it. You can look at the show and see the fingerprints on why there's such a big delineation. And to be honest with you, you can look at even at the programs itself. Because to be honest with you, you look at Punk's program with MJF and you see how radically different that was from everything else on the card. Yeah, everything was different. So when you get there and Punk is there and you start to see you start to see grumblings. I believe there was a, there was a fight report from a couple of weeks ago where they, they had to even clarify. Oh, we didn't think that we didn't mean to say that Punk was was going to try and leave or he wasn't going to come to work. It's all starting to make sense now, isn't it? Right. They reported that he's. They people thought he would not show up that week that he cut that promo. They thought he wouldn't show up, Mills. Why is that? Because they because he fucking knew at that point this is not where he wanted to be at. Now, one thing I will say, I do not feel as though he tried to get Colt Cabana fired because if that was the case, Colt Cabana would have been fired immediately. If that was the case, I really don't believe that's the case. I'm going to be honest. Like I, the thing is, if he was to exert that amount of stroke, it would have happened on day one, Mills. The, the guy, even though he didn't show up on TV, the fact that he still had a job and still getting paid is proof positive that he wasn't trying to get the guy fired or trying to do any of that stuff. I feel like that was Tony Khan. Again, amateur leadership. I feel amateur like leadership. if they had fired him when he showed up, it, it, it would have looked real sus. Look real, real sus. So, um, yes, he still has a job. Um, I'll say that. I'll, I'll say I don't believe it, but I will say that who who was spreading those rumors? Why did Hangman do that promo? 
when that promo happened, just like the Cody promo, people like kind of looked at it and said, that was weird. Right? Hang- that was weird. <laughs> he called it Hangman and Airhead. Um, what does he call him? Oh, my God. I was like, wow. Let's not get there yet. Let's not get there yet. Let's not get there yet. We still we still on Punk in the last month. You, you when, when it seems as though to me, Mox is the one, John fucking Mox, he's the one that's trying to keep this shit together. That's a real issue. This guy be hanging out with with niggas that got fucking COVID and shit like that at these at these places, pouring beer on them and shit in a basement. He's the one that seems to be he's the one that's OK with taking the job here. To appease someone, I think we should we should honestly applaud this guy for trying to keep it together. I don't know, man, because he he had the same professional experience as CM Punk. <laughs> if that's true. My that's true. But who? But if not him, who else would have took that? Because Jericho won't take in that pen. He don't even like the nigga. Nah, but to be honest with you, I think Jericho would have done it. But because again, the experience bigger than just ROH or New Japan or whatever the hell. Like these guys are cosplaying WCW from the late nineties. Because they have the, the the you know essentially the power and all this other influence and all this other stuff like that like they're cosplaying all that other stuff like that but they've never drawn anything real substantial they've drawn everything substantial in reference to like them in terms of like wow we really sold out this place but it's like you don't sell it out on a weekly basis or anything like that but I don't think any of that would happen Brian Punk you know moxley all the other stuff like that like these people are willing to do business because they know how to do business and at the end of the day they want to they understand how money is made in this business and 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 that's what leads us to all out we got these rumors that are happening punk is to to be fair and honest remember punk only did that one interview right before the fucking match that he got squashed in which i would love to know the story behind squashing punk on one week and then having him win the title the next i would love that story Cause there's something I'm a Brian Windhorst that one. Why? Why do they do that? Why do you do that? I'm also confused of why they did that. <laughs> it's gonna come out. It's gonna come out why they did that. But you have this drum. Go ahead. Where you yeah, he talked about they did that, but go ahead. Say what? I said I have an idea of why I think they did that. Why do you think they did that? Let's let's let's, let's put it all out in the open because I don't think we're going to be able to talk about CM Punk uh, much longer after the after the next two weeks. Oh, he will be back. Um, <laughs> however, no, I do think that they. Um, I think it was legitimately done to pop the rating. I think it was legitimately done to pull entry for all out. I'm gonna keep it a one 100- hundred absolutely with you i thought it was done i think this is a a decision most likely made by punk to draw attention to the show so people would see the show and then therefore go buy all out or go purchase all out you know for the business of it i don't see it as a truly like a backstage we're pulling the plug on this one and then we're coming back unless he really wasn't going to come back and then decided yeah i'll be back but realistically, I want to say I want to say it was for the rating. So the scrum happens. CM Punk goes off on Scott Colton, Colt Cabana, saying he he paid his bills. He's got a, a count with his mom, you hey, know, his friends. Remember, before we get to that, before we get to the scrum, a steal being brought into the fold for this one. It looks more shaky now that he was brought into the fold on television days before this event and now is involved within this matter and more more than likely will probably be fired. Like he's no. Like, wow. No, he's gone. He's gone. He's but gone. He stay steal himself being brought into the fold and a oh, thing for this matter too kind of also feels like a life imitating art a little bit. You know? Listen, man. Go scrum. Go scrum. We're scrummy. Let's get to the scrum. So you're, you're scrumming. He goes off on 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 Colt. He goes off on Hangman Page. Calls him calls him an empty headed fuck or something like that. Empty headed shithead. <laughs> oh my god, that was funny. <laughs> Nothing more crazy than what have I done to deserve this from Hangman Page? Number one, what have I done to deserve this? Is a crazy, crazy sociopathic thing to say. 
<laughs> number two, you're saying Hangman Page. Like when you, if you were to even say this outside, they'd be like, "Who the fuck is Hangman Page?" But to be fair, what has he done to deserve that from Hangman Page of all people? He probably did a lot backstage. I don't know. I, that I have to figure out. That Mills, 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 of the Mills. with it. Mills, I'm winking at you right now. Come on. Listen. He rubs everyone the wrong way. I absolutely believe he rubs them the wrong way. He to be the Punk's obsession with being the locker room leader, along with the distrust, he was already in a Viper's pit. There was no way he was going to win. Those guys don't want to listen to him tell them what to do. But this is this is my thing, right? This is a business. And, and 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 even less than the WWE part, which is much more of a business than anything. This is a business where you know the person you report to. There can be egos. At the end of the day, you're doing what one man tells you to do. You mean to tell me that I can find, you can probably find a couple people there who are just like, I don't give a shit what CM Punk says. <laughs> <laughs> like I don't give a shit. Like it, I'm willing to bet you at least sixty percent. I'm willing to bet at least sixty percent of that roster is saying that. Okay. To go tell Punk to eat a dick. Yeah, because honestly, it's like so. I'm I'm confused. My only thing is the disconnect. I see where you're saying with everything, but my confusion. Remember, remember the Britt Baker thing. Remember the Britt Baker thing. Why you're Why you're like, damn, I don't I don't know. Remember that? I do. We just joked about that a month ago. Remember how he came off when he did that? I do. That that's to someone he's not even wrestling. Imagine what he's doing to other people. He look. It seems like he lost interest fairly quickly while he was there, because it went from ho hum, I love everyone, to I only fight married couples. <laughs> that's funny. And I know we laughed at it, but you know you 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 were, you were kind of positing that like oh there's no way that it was it was. What did he do to deserve that? That's something that he probably did to deserve that. People are tired of that nigga, man. They're tired of him. And he's tired of them. We are witnessing the single greatest meltdown of a company we've ever seen. This is past startup. They have sped past Impact. They've sped past WCW. They did every single thing you should not do. And then you brought MJF back to do another work shoot. I don't even know if I feel bad for him. I don't, I don't, I, honestly, I don't, I, I, can't, I can't say that I do at this point. He got, so he got some heat too at the scrum as well. So he continues on, runs down Hangman, runs down Colton, says that the EVPs are children who couldn't manage a target. Again, Things that would you you would hear and that would rile anyone up. At that point, I'm like, this isn't a work. This is this is a guy that that's, that clearly has some issues right now. And then we get to the end of the scrum, and then they have a fight. It's being said that a still bit Kenny Omega. One of the one of the bucks got knocked out. I want anyone to go try and do some shit. The the same shit that Punk did. And ask yourself if you'll have you have a job after the fact. I guarantee you that you won't. I guarantee you that you won't have a job. And anyone saying you can't just fire a punk. If this was the NBA, if this was the fucking NFL, and it was knocking out owners and shit. What? What? Then what? It's fucking crazy. People are like people are literally thinking that he won't get fired for this. And he did. And he is. Fucking crazy. Again, the amount of people that think that he won't he didn't get fired or wouldn't get fired for this, y'all are crazy as hell. I don't care how big of a draw you are. I don't care how big of a of a star you are. You just can't like even just upon wrestling terms, you can't do shit like that. And we gotta look at Tony Khan too. He let Yo, him we do coming it for him. We coming for him. Don't worry about that. <laughs> he let him do it. He sat there and let him do it. If you, if, if, you know, punk's gone, let's say that, right? Punk's gone. Right. Realistically, how can you as the EVPs ever trust this guy again for letting him do that? I, so 
that trust is gone. Like what I know it wasn't there. There wasn't much left to go on at that point. That's completely gone at this point. To me, as I'm watching, so I want to take myself back to watching the scrum live because someone threw the link in the discord. I was like, oh, oh, I forgot the scrum. Let me see. And I see CM Punk there still bloodied eating muffins (laughs) throughout this entire thing. That's what makes it a little bit more of a spectacle. Um, talking about all this situation and i'm in awe because i'm like yo how is no one being able to punch this guy out right now like and and this was one of the very few media scrums where i feel like it was very it's not even though i feel like the questions are apropos i just feel like cm punk set the tone you know what i'm saying because it could have really gone the same way it goes at every scrum, but I feel like he genuinely set the tone in terms of the energy because it ended up following and it ended up following a little bit with the Chris Jericho thing and it ended up following a little bit actually with Keith and Swerve a little bit with the tone kind of set for all this other stuff and even Tony's questions. But him being able to say that and just kind of express all of that um, during this media scrum, to me, I feel like he saw this as his one media opportunity to say what he was going to say off of his chest without any filter. And say it say how he felt and truly how he means it. And he said, if anyone has a problem with it, they can talk to me backstage. He asked for the fight. And listen, I got I, like, I know I've been joking about the fight and stuff like that on Twitter. People have been really upset about it. I don't care. Why? <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. Cause I'm, cause I said I could never walk, watch a Bucks match. Like I ever watched them anyway. Uh, after they get after they got beat up, they hey got man, up. listen, they can't. You get beat up by CM Punk, man. All that choreography, them super kicks don't. <laughs> you slapping them thighs, they don't work well in the fight, baby. Where was it? Where was that? You let the weakest nigga in the world knock you out, man. Come on, man. Ain't still bitch you. This ain't this, this ain't vampire the masquerade, nigga. This ain't blade. Ace How steel. you let a man bite you? A steel. A steel is. A steel got little ass teeth too. I'm sure he got kids and all this other stuff like that. Like, why are you getting into these young? <laughs> oh, you know what? Whatever. They're not young, but listen, man. Let, let's just look at look at it look at it like this. A year ago, we were told that AEW was number one. They were they, they WWE rightfully was on the ropes. What we've seen is a complete reversal of fortune in 365 days, where that is honestly not even the case anymore. Can we just say it? Can we just call it right now? That is not the case anymore. No, I mean, in terms of you look at WWE, even just today with the announcement of Triple H being moved up to chief content officer, and you look at kind of like the, just a, a look at last week, Bianca Belair being, you know, WME, um, Liv Morgan going to be part of a film, WWE announcing their partnerships and stuff like that. And you can't say that for AEW. You can't say that what they've been in the news for has been actually progressive things involving wrestling because it has not. What they've been in the news for is because their own dipshit people keep leaking information to the news because they want their narrative to be right and they could not even be clear with the Eddie Kingston versus Sammy Guevara type of thing. But mm-hmm. this now is is an indication that they've taken a step back because of their own egos and to be honest with you, if they were any smart person they could figure out a way. They could figure out a way to figure it out. They, they just, they just can't. Well, they, I, I feel as though they, they really never could. The, the thing about AEW is that this was a company to me that always felt like, and, and we said this when it, when they just opened, that there is no company that could like burn out. That like they were, they were made to burn brightly, fast, and then flame out in a blaze of glory. That's the best way to put it. There's no way that just with that those combustible elements that you would have had, it, 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 even with all the talent that they have there, they have endless amounts of talent. Endless. But there was no way that you could do it with someone who had a proclivity to be obsessed with some of the great, like some of some of the to, honestly, some of the greatest wrestlers of all time, but also some of the biggest egos of all time. Hiring CM Punk is, was a was a moment where me and you was like, whoa, all right, yo. <laughs> Do you know what you're doing right there? Do you know what you have here? There's good and bad that comes with that guy. And we said this before, and nobody wanted to believe it, man. That's the crazy part about it. I said, don't it's, it ain't over till it's over, and it was over. 
bro. So, what I'm hearing, if it's true, usually it is, that later today they'll probably be announcing this. If it, you know, if and when it's said and done, what does this mean for AEW meals? What does this mean for CM Punk? Well, firstly, what does this mean for CM Punk? You know, I feel as though this could have only ended one way, and that was with him destroying it himself. Hey, man. It can't be just you. I think it can't be everybody else. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'll say. I think he really needs to take a look at himself and kind of uh, uh, truly assess, like, what what is he really doing and what is he truly contributing? And how big of a... Because I think it's really his own attitude that lets him fall out. He called, he called pro wrestling dumb at the beginning of the, of the scrum. To me, that lets me know a lot more than than I needed to know about what he feels about it. He regrets it. He regrets it. Cause let's, let's be honest. He turned, he turned the bucks down and Cody, he turned them down before. He absolutely did. He turned them down. He said the bag won't big enough. If I remember correctly, he said the bag wasn't Tony, big enough. It was Tony Khan who negotiated the thing with CM Punk. It was him sitting down with Tony Khan. He always tells the story. It was him sitting down with Tony Khan and kind of looking at his perspective on pro wrestling and what he wants to give, which is the reason why he eventually decided to sign with the company. Um, and his perspective was, as Punk said, and be clear what he, what he said when he says, I'm trying to run a business. I, I, I am trying to run a business with the, with the, with the owner next to you. What makes you think... What, what what idea does that give you about Tony and Punk's relationship compared to the elite? What he was trying to do. I feel like the way I see with the CM Punk thing is I truly believe that he was trying to build this company to be bigger than what it was. I'm 100% sure. Yes, arrogance. Yes, selfishness. Yes, dickheadedness but i truly do believe that he wanted the company to be bigger and actually be a competitor because i think everyone who's been in the wwe knows on a reference scale it is not the same AEW isn't looked like in the same way as wwe but you can have that one superstar you can have the hulk hogan coming to wcw you can have the Stone Cold Steve Austin or you can have the John Cena or something along those lines that changes the tides of everything. And I think he genuinely wanted to be that because he knows he's an attraction and he knows, yes, the shit ton of money I get is deserved because I'm one of the biggest stars in professional wrestling over the last decade. But they all say that though, Mills. No, but it's I it's being it up for them. <laughs> I remember being I remember when they thought they thought Impact would do the same same amount of talent. To be honest with you, they said, all we got to do is just this little bit, this little thing. And then they hired Hulk Hogan. Well, they weren't thinking progressive enough. But also, here's the thing. It's AEW's own fault. So you get to AEW all out, right? No one gives a shit about this show. It's probably the worst AEW paper. I mean, I don't want to say it's the worst, but it definitely goes down as one of the worst ones. Because I think people just, the lack of interest within the card because of how they develop their characters on the show and this all goes now to tony and i look at tony khan and i say and and you see all the signs that are there and again i'm speaking to the people on this one because all the signs have been there the man publicly shitted on swollen people thing their shoulder at it and said you know you know what people said when they shit on swole it said all billionaires are bad people to dispel the blame from this man, the accountability of this man publicly shaming someone on the internet. Or they said, or they said, or they said, um, or they said, um, they said she sucked anyway. That's what they said. They said she was bad anyway. When he, what's another thing I can say? I mean, there are just several things. Go to the tweets. I mean, last last Monday he made a tweet right after Aaliyah and Raquel won the titles, talking about this was this was the, the luck that he was waiting for. And I said, this ain't gonna end well. And look at us now, seven days later. He looks at uh, they make um, WWE runs their show, and this is what he says. Hold on, he says. 
Go on. <laughs> I'm serious. I'm not going to sit back and take this fucking shit. <laughs> because WWE ran a show also on Labor Day weekend. Well, he also believes that they're contract tampering, which is not a thing because there's no governing body in wrestling that tells there's you. There's no, yeah, there, tampering does not exist in professional wrestling. There's stuff that you shouldn't be able to, like wrestlers themselves cannot negotiate with another bo- thing while under contract, I believe. Actually, don't hold me to that. They cannot appear on television for sure until their contract is expired. And they're not even supposed to be negotiating, but even NBA doesn't fucking follow those rules. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Slap on the wrist, $10,000, $100,000, whatever. They got yeah, that shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But at the end of the day, I look at it, and what does this mean for AEW? I would honestly I would honestly be looking at the the idea or or the possibility that even though the Bucks signed an extension, that they would, they're, they're out. They're gone. I feel as though the trust is broken indefinitely. I feel like the same with Kenny. Amen. This is this is something that's beyond. This is a monster, the CM Punk monster that was created there and coddled and given whatever he wanted, blew up in their faces. That was their big joker because once once Cody right. left, they banked it all on him. That was a big joker. He's going to bring us all of this well, broken it down. That broken down CM Punk was going to be the one that was going to do this for them. But it's also their own inefficiencies to be able to run an actual business and this is what we've been talking about for years we've been talking about this for years and people still get on us today that we've been talking about this thing for years they're inefficient they're they're inefficient they don't know how to run a tv show they put their own booking dreams ahead of actual business they they do a lot of things that step on their own toes in terms of growing and expanding, they don't care about expanding to an audience bigger than the sweaty, bald, white guys that are all filling out the audience. No offense to any sweaty, bald, white guys. But it, it was a weird, it was just a weird situation. I, I've never seen anything like this. I, I think, you know, without Punk, you, 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 you're going to have a, a, a roster that is just a week removed from a, a talent meeting, you're going to have a roster that if they were already unhappy, they're even more unhappy. They're scratching and clawing at the damn door at this point to get out of there. They're scratching at the door to get out of there. This was, this was a powder keg that was going to explode regardless. You gave them EV, you gave them EVP status and your whole EVP staff got beat up in one night. Hey man, how, how much did it work after that? How much role does Triple H have in this? <laughs> well, what did he do? He just got a job. All he did was get a job and they couldn't take it? <laughs> All he did was book some events. All he did was do some things. And shit just hit the fan. 2022 is going to be one hell of a wrestling year. Bro, Cole Cabana is sitting in the back like, I told y'all, niggas. I told y'all. I told y'all. I told y'all he was like this. Yeah, it won't just Man, me. Steel. <laughs> like this is this is nuts. I've never seen anything like this before. WCW two thousand. I'm, I'm gonna say it right now, Mills. As someone who watches WCW, who has watched WCW and was watching it as it happened, this is this is some two thousand WCW two thousand shit. But at the end of but but at the end of all of this. AEW, they write in their own history at this point in, in terms of what happened at that scrum. This is their own history that they're that they're doing. Because when we said this before, when Punk came back, that was a moment. I'm never going to take that away from AEW. That was one of the most pure, one of the most real moments that any company has ever had. Absolutely. That's a real, that was a real fucking moment. No doubt about it. That promo, that was a promo that's going to live on forever. Because it's one of, and, and I'll say it's one of his best promos. But once he once he left that stage that night, Mills, the 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 sand they turned it over, the the hourglass got turned over. Because at that point, it's like okay, how long until he starts being CM Punk? It took three hundred and sixty five days before he became that. You you got to think that a lot of the machine behind WWE really protected us from who he really what he really acts like. Cause I feel like that's really what he really acts like. I mean, that's people have said as much that he acts like that for real. 
You got to think. So, they- so you, yeah, I agree. I agree because I'm, I think it's mostly because of the influence and in, in the and the role that he played in AEW, which led to making it the way they is. And you can see it's the same thing. That's why it's always it's it's so weird because I feel like WCW. I don't want to say they wrote the blueprint on how not to run a professional wrestling company, but they definitely wrote the blueprint on how to fuck it up really badly. Ultimately, do to me, people say, is this the end of AEW? And I say, no. Because <laughs> realistically, unless the business goes to shit, it's still going to run. They're still funded. It, WCW's problems, I mean, a lot of their problems were their backstage strife and their social strife. Um, but at the end of the day, it was a business deal that really cooked them. Yeah, they, I mean, they, they were about to, I mean, Bischoff was going to go sell them on the new WCW. He was going to go sell them. Big Bang was about to happen in that that January. It was really just the business side of it. I mean, it's the same reason Impact is still alive. My thing is this as well. Having to force Tony Khan to push the guys, all of the guys that he signed that are 5'8", five, 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 nine, not really like big like dudes that all do the same type of thing other than like Lance Archer. Oh, wait, he does the same shit as the small guys do. Uh, I don't know what that company looks like. It looks like Impact to me. It looks like ROH to me. I don't like. That's what the company looks like to me. Without without the without a without a punk. And, <laughs> this is the worst. And let's. I mean, the TV deal. We've been talking about it for weeks. What is it going to look like? WB Discovery. They're they're you they're locked. CM Punk. I don't know what the hell they. But you got to do it. But you, you you have to do this. You have to make this decision. Meals, there's if if what precedence is that set? That's what I'm saying. I was trying to say yesterday, like if a punk is is able to remain there, if I'm hangman page, I'm going to go knock him out and say, okay, give me a title shot now. Cause you ain't gonna fire me. Or if you fire hangman, then you lose the locker room. He's in a he's in a fucked up position. He had to fire him. What would <laughs> What would happen in WWE if a situation like this happened? They're fired. They're done. If Seth Rollins wailed out on Matt Riddle. But Meals, they're publicly traded. Nothing's going to happen in that company unless they say so. Like if you go off, you're either going to get suspended. Look at Sasha and Naomi. You're going to get suspended or you're going to get fired. Ain't nobody doing that shit. In in a, in a company that got an IPO, hell no. It's too much money to be made. I mean, Tony want to talk about money. It, it ain't look like he had money on Saturday though. Let's let's get off this. Listen, do we get back to NXT, <laughs> or do we do we just go on the Clash at the Castle? Let's do Clash NXT and let's let's circle back around. Um, because we got a little bit of NXT, we will leave that for the war Uh, because I don't know. I mean, Cyrus and Kwango want to talk about (laughs) well, I mean, no, it was a good show. They should, they should absolutely, they should absolutely have the 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 leeway to overarching thoughts on NXT. How about that? It was, it was, I thought it was a great show. Um, I thought that it was exactly what I predicted, and them just basically being like, okay, NXT UK is completely done, let's like, let's kind of wipe this slate clean with them. Um, they got basically defeated five and zero. I'm not. I'm really not going to count Pretty Deadly as UK because they've been on NXT for at least six months at this point. Like, yeah, I, I can't. <laughs> they've been there for a while. Um, I, I, I think that again, more, more accolades for Braun. I, I, I tend to worry that like if you don't kind of have him lose that title now and, and do something else and, and and look for another character position for him, that he would have so many accolades that it's going to make it hard for him to live up to that um, right now. What are your thoughts on Mandy? I think it's fine. I think I, I if it wasn't going to be her, then, um, you know, if it wasn't going to be her, then, then I, then I feel like it, it, it could have been Blair Davenport. But again, it looks to me that the people that they kept that were on that show are going to be moving on to Europe. So like, if that's the case, like, you, you can't really have them go back with that title and leave the company without, you know, leave that show without it. Right. Absolutely. Well, listen, man, 
congratulations to NXT. It was a fun show. Carmelo Hayes, Ricochet set things off right. Um, everything was just really good from top to bottom. Like, you know what? I was not mad at it. It felt really like a takeover. Um, level of quality, level of work. We're almost a year into this NXT 2.0 thing, and I'm sure we'll have a discussion, or Quan and Cyrus will have a discussion on a year of NXT 2.0, and yeah, we'll be able to talk about it. Um, let's move back to Saturday. <laughs> Clash at the castle. Hold on, I got a, I got a, um, I got a guest who wants to wants to come in. Oh God, who is it? I got a, I got a prep thing. This is a, this is a fluid show. This is, this is a, this is a fluid show today. This is, we, got a lot about. we calling it on the fly. Um, on the fly. Hold on. Get them right now. Okay. All right. Sure. Hey man. Yo, Cornell, Cornell, you're live on the air show. Oh, I'm live. Hey man. Oh my God. First off, I was happy to be calling number five. Speaking of five. That's how long CM Punk was in um, AEW about five seconds. Can you believe it? Wow. Uh, (laughs) Here's kind of my thing. Here's kind of my thing. So, you know, if if you're fighting backstage and you got your man throwing a chair, what did you think was going to happen? So a lot of people say suspended indefinitely. No, the boy, he cooked. Mm. He got fired on his day off. Man, he wasn't even stealing boxes. No, nah, that's crazy. But anyways, no, nah, I, I just want to call in and say, H did, you know, <clears throat> that's all. That's all really. I just want to say H did and uh hey man, I can't wait to watch Dynamite on Wednesday, man. All right, man. Can't wait to watch Dynamite. I love Thank you. Thank you guys so much. Love you, hey, man. I love you. I love you guys too. Uh remember, always and forever. I'll put your ones up. Thank you. <clears throat> <laughs> I for now. That was Cornell. Speaking of putting your ones up, because we were just about to talk about Clash at the Castle. Yeah. Um, what a show, man! Highlighted by a, to me, one of the best main events. One, just one of the best main events in a very, very long time. I know there's a match that people rate higher than this, but to me, that Roman Rangers, Drew McIntyre, lived up to main event worthy status, especially compared to its contemporaries over the weekend. They tore it down. I'm, I'm, I'm willing to say at this point, to me, Drew is probably my favorite Roman. Uh, like he's my favorite Roman rival right now. I know it's I know Seth is still number one, but they don't they don't run that too much, you know, anymore. But like I think Drew to me showed that he he really can hang with Roman when it comes to that main event style. Roman works a very methodical style. And for a big guy, Drew sells very, very well for that. You know what I'm saying? So um shout out to him for that. Do can you I, think can I, go ahead. Go ahead. I want to give a hot take. Real hot take. Okay. Um, my hot take is, and it's, I'm glad that Cornell got off the phone. I agree with Quan that this is a 4.75. And I'll say it because of this. It was going into five-star territory. And then it essentially had the same ending that we've been seeing for the last 18 months. <laughs> and that's what took off that 0.25 of a star for me. Like, I think if Drew won five star across the board unanimously, but with Sola Sokoa debuting as another Oos, the Oos without the Chargers, um, <laughs> oh god, the Chargerless Oos. <laughs> he looked good. There was a, there's a mystery there. What's his archetype gonna be? Who's he gonna? You know what I'm saying? What's that gonna look like with, with, with Sammy and all this other stuff like that? I get it, but it was just the same ending that we've always seen. I love Roman Reigns, but it was the same ending. That's why I can't give it a five. That's why I can't give it a perfect five. I that, that that's fair. Um, I'm not mad at that. I, I think that again, it, it's it's a situation where like they're they're not ready. <laughs> they're not ready to let it go with him. Which and I said, you're like, I'm not gonna be the one to fuck this up. I tell you that. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're not ready to let it go. I don't think Drew's done. I, I really don't think he's done. I, I mean, yeah. I... Do, you, do you think they run it back? No. Usually Roman, but no, seriously. Usually he does do matches more than once. 
Roman's like, all right. So that October pay per view you guys are talking about, just don't count me in for that one. <laughs> Extreme Rules, I'm out. I see y'all in November. That's what I'm assuming he's saying. <sighs> yeah, I, 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 got, I mean, we gotta go. To, we gotta talk about Gunther and, and Sheamus. But before that, I want to, I want to say shout out to the way they book Liv, man. I thought Liv showed a whole lot, bro. I, I, I'm, I'm actually like really proud of her. And, and Shayna for what they what they put on with that match. It looked believable. I, I really enjoyed that match a lot. I don't know how you felt about it. I didn't see what you felt about it because I um I was out the chat, but like I, I really liked that match a lot. It was it was it was a strong match between Levin and Shayna. I didn't get to see a lot of it because I was being called for various other things in my household. But yeah. you know what? I gotta look back at it. I really didn't get to see the match to be honest with you. Really good. Especially the ending, I thought the ending was good. But 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 Gunther and 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 Sheamus, man, if what I'm hearing is true, poor Walter. <laughs> Listen, man, you know it was another thing that bothered me about that scrum. It was the swerving key thing, but it was also like the questions they asked. So I don't know if you stuck around. Did you watch the entire scrum or just see a punk's part? I I, I really just can't stand to watch like like <laughs> word <and> wine. <laughs> so so I'm. I'm just, for a fan bro i can i can i can agree that he's like um i can agree that he's talented i i've always said the guy was talented he's just got a shitty attitude bro i agree and the shitty attitude kind of came out but also he was asked a shitty question so one of the people at the media scrum essentially was like i saw that the claim got a better reaction than keith and swerve did you guys ever think of calling an audible and having the claim win the title <laughs> to which swerve was like man no essentially <laughs> like why would the fuck would they do that and then tony is like you know what i can't think of a better match at arthur ash stadium than a rematch between the acclaim and swerve and keith lee to which swerve was like why the fuck are we doing that <laughs> like why do i have to go up against i'm like bro this isn't even real like relax <laughs> and also also your title reign is transitional as fuck so I mean, there's that the claims that. have gotten way more development and purpose on television over the last number of weeks than Keith and Swerve has. So it is what it is. But speaking of tag team matches, we had a couple tag team matches on the show. Mm-hmm. First of all, Damage Control, official name, defeats Bianca Belair, Alexa Bliss, and Asuka. First time Bianca Belair is pinned. Very interesting that she takes the pin in this. I mean, it literally could have been Alexa Bliss or Asuka. Even more so that they weren't even on the show on Monday. So it definitely could have been them. Um, but they made it a point to Bailey to pin Bianca Belair and kind of set those seeds of doubt and also remind people of how good Bailey is. Sorry, I'm, I'm the T. Listen, this is a busy day in wrestling. The T's out there, the T's out there. So go to spoiler talk right quick while I talk about uh, why I feel as though that was a good idea. So um, if you're not on the Discord, Twenty dollars down. You're get. This is one of the best days. I can't imagine. Like you were a, a fat. Like the fact you do this while doing the show to me, it always just blows my mind. Hey, listen. This is one of the greatest days on the, on the Discord ever. I agree that I feel as though Bianca was the best person to take that pin. You want to set it up. I know a lot of people were like, "Why didn't they just announce the match?" I'm thinking there's going to be more heat given to it. I think this is this is Bianca's first real feud. She's going to get some 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 meat behind it. Some some teeth into it. Um, no a steel. Um, but like, I, I think this is going to be definitely a, a, a real kind of few for her. So again, it, it looked good. I want to talk about EO Sky though. I feel like she's been a little tentative since she's come to the main roster. I don't, I, I know she's not completely, I feel like she's not completely there yet in terms of, you know, she had like a foot leg injury that takes a while to, to kind of trust your, your instincts for that. Again, I'm hoping she figures it out and, and she kind of stops that tentativeness. Cause it looks like she's a little, she's a little scared out there, but Dakota Kai looked great. On, on Saturday. She looked really, really good. God bless. I think they all look great. Um, and then we had the other tag team match. Edge and Rey Mysterio defeats the Judgment Day, but that's not the story of the match. The story of the match is that Dominic Mysterio officially turned on his dad and I guess Edge, too. I mean, uh, he didn't really like Edge, it seemed. But <laughs> he turned on the- it was effective, yo. No, it was definitely effective. You know what's crazy? I think there was an interview that um, Rey Mysterio ha- has with Ariel Hawani, and he said he would never feud with his son. 
<laughs> at all. He said, I would never, well, no, actually he said, I would never turn on my son. Well, I guess that that's how you don't see this coming. Because he absolutely turned on his daddy, Larry, closed line the hell out of him. We talk about more on Monday about how the hell that looks because I don't know about the, the, the fit. But, you know, we're working on the fit right now. He need to work on his abs, man. He had a little, he had a little, <laughs> he had some shit coming up. He had a muffin top energy when he ripped that shirt off, man. Amen. Come on, man. Hey, man. They just threw something together, but we talk about it on Monday. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, again, really strong pay per view from from start to finish. But did, I, is it me or did you feel as though the Seth Riddle thing seemed a bit inconsequential, like it wasn't really that important when we finally got it? I, I was actually kind of weird how much I didn't feel much for that match. Well, I think it's because it came after that big angle, right? Like it's the big angle that came out of nowhere, and then you followed up with you know Seth and and Riddle. They probably could have used a segment to break that up. If I were yeah. them, I would have used a segment to break that up because yeah. Seth and Riddle, I guess th- that blood feud, I guess deserved all the attention that it was supposed to get. Extreme rules, though. Extreme rules. So, I mean, we'll we'll see. Um, what happened on SmackDown? Do we have? Do we want to talk about New Day getting squashed out? Because I mean, I I really feel like uh, I mean, SmackDown was like a, a one tr- a one match show to me, in, in a bunch of other shit. What what did you think about it, Mills? Um, I don't know. I wasn't really paying attention to SmackDown, to be honest with you. <laughs> so let's go to Raw. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's do that. Uh, Raw opened with again the the Dom segment uh with with Edge Edge getting taken out by by um having his knees clipped off. Judgment Day actually seems like they are like kind of like that disruptor group that they were supposed to be from the beginning. They actually seem as though like things happen with them. You know what I mean? Like in a way that it didn't happen with like retribution and shit like that. Like I feel as though they actually they they advance their story in a meaningful way. I know that like it's a meme. You know that I think it's only this is only a meme like within like our actual chat that you know though they they lose matches, but it's just like they still kind of regain their heat after they lose these matches because they did beat Ray. And edge, or they 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 did be Ray one on one, and they've been able to kind of get the the upper hand on them. So it doesn't feel like it's too um, it, it doesn't feel like it's too one sided in the feud. What do you think? I think they really, to me, it, it was that thing was always searching for kind of a purpose, and I think they finally kind of found one. I think they are as despicable as advertised now, finally, and I think they were always playing bad guys, but it was never truly something that really felt despicable. And I think now that they kind of have that. Um, and in terms of Judgment Day and how they're positioned on the actual show, I fully agree with you. It's just now they have to really continue to make some noise. It can't just be beating up Rey Mysterio. I mean, uh, at some point, it doesn't seem oh, like yeah. they're moving off Rey Mysterio because now this feud has just been blossomed into something different. But which is nice. It, it, it's the it's one of the only feuds that I feel like has had a has had a beginning, middle and, and, and it's going to reach an eventual end. Right. Like the beginning was the edge stuff. Uh, there was that weird, you know, they had that weird moment again between Vince leaving and Triple H coming, but they've they've regained what I feel as though they wanted to happen with this group. They're featured very prominently throughout the show, multiple times a, a, a night. I, I would say, like, if you're in Damien, Rhea, and Finn's position at this point, being featured multiple times, getting two T-shirts already, and shit like that, like that's not a bad place to be in. I, I think they're I think they're doing way better than they were in, let's say, like May or June. No, absolutely. Um, theory re- return this 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 uh this episode uh, had a really lengthy but really good match with Kevin Owens. I hate that stair spot. I really do not like that stair spot. I I mean, what what's the end game with Kevin Owens with this thing? I think I mean most people have been saying okay he's gonna probably be teaming with Sammy and 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 taking the tag titles. Um. I, I is am I crazy for thinking that I don't think tag titles are in his in his future? I think an actual singles title is probably in his future. I don't know. There's only one person who can contend for this title, and it doesn't seem like they're like he seems like he's definitely focused on it. But I feel like there'll still be things put in his way, and maybe he'll have to choose between this friendship with Sami Zayn and the championship shot or something along those lines. And I'm not sure. I, I mean, I'm really not sure at this point. Well, he's 
I, I feel I, like I feel like Survivor Series is probably not going to be Raw versus SmackDown this year. It looks like it's going to be Bloodline versus whoever the hell opposes them. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And this is the best way to set that up. This is the best yeah. way to set that up to me. Um, I mean, we forgot like the biggest <laughs> thing in the <this> show. <laughs> I didn't forget it. <laughs> I just didn't want to talk about it. <laughs> Braun Strowman returned. Boo. Listen, man. <laughs> Yeah, that's not that's not what they did when he came back. They the roof blew off that I arena, bro. That. <laughs> I told you, bro. But the thing is, that's interesting is that he came back and beat up those poor tag teams for about ten minutes in the picture in picture and all of that, and then left. <laughs> that's what doesn't make any sense to me. I don't know. The, 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 to me, I'll get to it at the end of the show, but. Yeah, him beating him up for 10 minutes to me was wild. <laughs> so he beats everybody up, then says uh, that he's going to be on SmackDown on Friday. It is being reported that Braun is returning to SmackDown. I think it's a good place for him. I am interested in seeing, do they just put him right with Gunther? Or are they going to make him go after Roman? Which I think that would make no one happy. I think that would make hey, a man. lot of people. Gunther got Imperium now. So it's a little... Uh... The it's a good a it's different. A, it's a good mountain for him to cross. He's gonna be a baby face, as they said. Um I would think that the, is the mid card a little bit too baby face heavy on SmackDown right now? You got Nakamura, you've got Madcap, you've got I don't um, think they have enough time for what they're doing. I don't know. My 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 issue is so they're signing all of these people back, but then they're also having these long ass fucking matches, right? Like, everyone's getting a long match. So, like, you look at Raw last night. Raw had five matches on a three-hour show. Like, five. <laughs> so, that means not everyone is going to... If if Raw has five matches on a three-hour show, imagine SmackDown. It's probably going to go four. Maybe even five itself. But, but I feel like Braun breaks up that... What, what you? I'm not saying you call him monotonous, but but he he seems to me he would break that He's there to break that um to break that cycle and be a spectacle. If you could just bring out Braun to have like a little two, three minute match, I think that would break up a lot of the the because that because what you're saying is that there's a lack of spectacle outside of the pay-per-view matches, right? And if you have Braun there, he's he's I mean, they did the Drew Gulak thing. That's why I'm like, wow, what are they gonna do with him on there? But I'm interested. I'm at the at the very least, I'm interested. You on your own with that one. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> That's fine. I mean, I'll that's fine. Do, but I ain't interested. I'll tell you that. That's fine. I, you know, I'm, I'm I'm not, you know, I'm not shitting on the idea. I saw the reaction that he got on Monday. I, I'm, I'm hard pressed to, to, to not believe he wouldn't get the same one on Friday. He's a returning superstar. He was very liked by the, by the, especially the kids. Like the kids love this, this big oaf, this big goof. And big it seems like they're pierced, nose pierced. Hey, man. He controlling his narrative. Um, there's been this interesting do drop Nikki Cross thing that's been going on. Have you been noticing it? They've been fighting in the background, losing in, in the ring. They've been fighting in the background on on Raw this week. Nikki threw off her mask and tossed it a do drop. Seems to me like they're they're doing something with those two now. I would hope so. Literally, they have won one match together. <laughs> <laughs> I looked it up. I had to look it up. To make sure I wasn't bugging. On t- on TV, they won one match. Apparently, according to Quan, Nikki Ash is zero for nineteen. I-, I guess zero for twenty after Raw. I was bugging. He said that on NXT. Jeez, Jesus Christ! What one thing I will say about that? I know a lot of people are like, you know, shitting on uh, them being on that show, but I was like, listen, they're a non-factor on TV, and they look like. They were they got a reaction like they were stars on NXT. So like that that was something that I felt as though really gave that show a little bit more. I'm That's interested cool in the they just love everybody. They just like to they just like that it's free and they get to see some WWE. <laughs> stars. But, but I mean, in terms of like, but but really, seriously though, it was like in terms of like how much of a non issue and a not entity they are for them to have gotten that reaction. They haven't been in the PC like um, Dewdrop never made it to the to the PC. Remember that she never she never was on NXT. She skipped it. 
So, and she still got a good reaction. So it's, I won't say that it's because they love everybody. I think that they were treated like stars because they were, they, they were looked at like, oh my God, like there's a genuine possibility that these people who have that, that experience could beat this tag team. But I'm, a, I'm really interested in the toxic attraction angle. We haven't really seen Gigi in ring. Um, so I'm wondering what, where they're going with that. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know where they're going with this. They break up another tag team. Great. Who's going to fight? I don't know if they're breaking up or just the transitioning. Up. Yeah, they may be transitioning yeah. to something new. Maybe. Yeah, I don't, think, I don't think they're breaking up. I think I think Nikki's probably going to drop that superhero angle. I, I think that's over with. Let me bring uh, my girl in Alba Fire. <laughs> <laughs> that would be fire, actually. No pun intended. Um, what else happened on this show? Uh, we got the... Uh, I mean, there was no winner to that tag team match, huh? So it looks like they're going to... No, they're probably- there was no winner. Um, Dominic looks wild. Just does. He's a better <laughs> fit. Clearly, this wasn't his choice of fit because you know how this man be dripped out. When I fake LV, yeah, I know. Uh, so clearly, this wasn't his choice. Um <laughs> So uh, we'll see. A lot of long matches. Uh, Kevin Owens beat Theory. I thought that was fine. Uh, Theory confronted Gargano, who I was. I was like, where the fuck is Gargano? He will have his in ring debut next week. Um, have you noticed no more twenty four seven title? Are you sad about it? Are you are are you are you disturbed by it? What what do you feel about it? I am the lack of twenty four seven title for me. The fact that they gave five minutes. Well, actually, three minutes and 40, 52 seconds for a recap of Clash at the Castle <laughs> instead of anybody else doing anything to me is very, very telling. I think Raw needs more variety. I, I mean, variety will help. I, I'm not mad at it, though. <laughs> I, I'm actually glad that we get more matches, man. Like, I'm a big fan of that. Big fan of the more matches, bro. I, I'm sorry. I I, I, I can't hate on it. I, I think that it's it's been a net positive for the show as a whole to just feel different, to have those that that focus on in-ring quality and you still have really great talkers and you still have really great people on there. But like the the lack of like even AJ Styles wasn't on the show this week. Like they need to find something for some of these people to do. I don't know, man. I I just feel like that it needs it just needs a little bit. I need to break the monotony of the matches up, and no, you know that's that's all I'm saying. I think we have a lot of great performers on the show, and it's obviously showcasing all of them. But I also think like, yo, like we need. I feel like you can. More I, feel segments. Like, I feel like you complained about a lot of the variety stuff though, back when it was happening. Not really, to be honest with you. It gave me, even if it wasn't meant for me to see, it at least gave me a break to come back. Did you like the did you like the the flex contest from a couple months ago? I mean, that's not the variety I'm talking about. I'm talking more about like the 24/7 stuff. I'm talking about like the little other feuds like the Gable and stuff and I'm talking about all the other kind of like smaller feuds on the show that will kind of get time. Not le- not necessarily like the, the 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 flex contest and all this other the arm wrestling contest and stuff like that. That's not necessarily variety. I'm talking about just like m- a little bit more on the show. Um, cause not everything needs to go the distance, to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah, okay. All right. Well, I'm just saying, well, the, the, the ratings are like at all time high, but yeah, I think, um, the fans are loving it. I, 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 I shudder to think like that people really feel like this is like a real wrestling show now. And I, I think that's what people are looking at it. Like now I think that like, do you feel as though with the way that this show is hitting 2 million you know, consistently. I don't know if this will happen after football next week. That that they they're getting some of the AEW fans back. Yeah, yeah, and I think people are just generally intrigued with the direction of the show, um, which is very interesting. I mean, Dexter Loomis ends the show by kidnapping the Miz or choking out the he, Miz. Yeah, he choked them out. He ain't kidnapping that. They 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 do not know what to think of this man in Ken- Kansas City. They were not NXT watchers in Kansas City. Nah, they, <laughs> they, that 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 the submission ain't hit a bit. They were like, "What is he doing?" <laughs> um, I I did enjoy that main event between Bobby Lashley and the Miz. I, I again, I I think putting Bobby in these prime positions to not only main event the show, but or or just have the best matches on the show or the opportunity to have the best matches on the show really does the the title very well. 
um, I thought Miz kind of turned it to another gear in this match as well. There was a brutality with him, right, Mills, where he was just I was just like, bro, like this is this is a different Miz than we, than we've seen before. Hmm. What? I'm trying to think. <laughs> no, you're right. No, you're right. He's definitely working on another level right now. He's doing good. He's doing good. Yeah, it, it, it is. It is definitely like you know a, a different brutality level. I'm interested in seeing where the Loomis thing goes. It's a good first feud for him. It's better than Ziggler. I always um, thought that would be his first feud anyway, to keep it honest with you. Like, even when he was on the roster before he got fired, I always thought his first feud would be the, with The Miz, considering how they were doing feuds with The Miz at that point. I always So this is kind of like right where I expected him to be. Okay. But okay. but I don't know if the Dexter Loomis is not necessarily a savant in the ring, nor has he been known to be. Had that one good match with Roddy but, that I really enjoyed, but yeah. It's Roddy. Um, speaking of that, Roddy's injured. Yeah, and they had to pretty much change that whole diamond. We didn't even talk about that. Like they had to change the whole diamond mine thing <laughs> because he was injured. I think he yeah. probably dodged a bullet. I think he dodged a bullet there. I I don't think he w- that would have been like a good uh heel turn for him. I think it would have been way too routine for him to do that heel hey, turn. Man, now he can come back with his man's. <laughs> oh, Bobby Fish, <laughs> hard kicking. <laughs> Hard kicking Bobby Fish, man. Calling for the faith for everybody. No, I, I, I hope he gets well soon. Um, I hope he's looking at what's happening at AEW and being like, you know what? Yeah, I'm gonna stay. <laughs> like, there's no, <laughs> <laughs> like, literally, Adam Cole is somewhere wrapped up in bandages. In in in, in Pennsylvania, I feel bad for him now. No, it was That's the saddest the- thing ever a couple months ago. Now what? No, it still is the saddest thing ever. It's just sadder now. It's not. It's, it hasn't gotten any better. Life comes at you so fast, right? And and then you know before you know it, boom, there it is. Like I don't know, but really good. Um, really you good. Raw to show up. The yeah, I've been <laughs> waiting. We got to get this show up. I got to edit this show. Good episode of Raw. Um, you guys will enjoy the the, the AEW CM Punk talk. We talked about it for quite some time. Thank you to our patrons. That we have a bunch of new patrons. We're gonna do the shout outs next week, though. Um, <laughs> thank you guys. Uh, but we have a new, we have a lot of new members to our to our actual Discord. So shout out to you guys. Um, really appreciate you guys tapping in with us, joining in with us. I, I think a lot of people have like joined the Discord and they've gotten they they felt right at home. They just start talking, you know. And that's like the best part. Like if you are not because we're we're very abrasive, or not me, but some people in the Discord are very abrasive when you first come in there. How do you, you think not you? <laughs> it's not me. How do you say not it's you? Really, it's really not me. It's it's everybody else. I'm not gonna name any names. He was on the show earlier. But um, yeah, thank you guys for listening. Um, Patreon, we're gonna we're I'm, we're gonna have this week in wrestling uh <laughs> next week because <laughs> this week is gonna be legendary. It's gonna this is gonna live in infamy forever. But um just stay tuned with everything that's going on with the A show. Uh we're gonna get the show up now. Thank you all for listening. And until next week for meals, I'm Justin. Peace.